the OnePlus 13 will be the perfect alternative to the S25 Ultra, even the S24 Ultra. Hear me out on this. So, got announced yesterday. It's available in China for pre-order. So that means ideally it'll probably be here sometime December, January timeframe. And this kind of starts the starts the competition. It kicks off the race because everybody's waiting for what? The S series, the new Samsung Galaxy phones. We know they're going to come out in January. It's going to have one UI 7, which is their version of Android 15, and we'll get to see the new phone. But before that, we get a good preview with the OnePlus 13, which in a lot of ways looks much improved over the OnePlus 12. And the OnePlus 12 is a fantastic phone. And even today, you can still pick one up at Best Buy with 512 gigabytes of storage for 750. I mean, Best Buy is selling the S24 Ultra with 256, I believe, for 1099. So you can still get a considerable cost savings there. And where the rubber meets the road, they're just different enough where they offer a little bit of a different flavor, but you still get that same level of power, same level of performance. They always have the same chip and they try to do their own things with the cameras. They've got the Hasselblad cooperation, which has gotten better over the years. But OnePlus is like the antithesis of Samsung. You know, Samsung, they keep giving you the same old, the same old. We still get the 45 watt charging. You know, they don't really make any changes. The phone looks basically 99% the same, just like iPhone. They copy the same homework, use different ink and turn it in the next go around. Still 256 storage baseline. Uh, they, they throw the S pen in there because that's like the only thing, that's the only thing they can hang their hat on still, that and Dex. And the S24 Ultra is a fantastic phone. I mean, it probably is the best Android phone of this year. And the S25 Ultra will probably be in the running for the best phone of next year. But there's something special about the OnePlus phones. They're zippy. They're fast. They've got their own version, their own take on Android, which is the Oxygen OS, which I like. It's nice. It's zippy. It's quick. And they've got the alert slider. People love the alert slider. I think the cameras are good. And I don't think they're the best cameras in the world. I think they could use some improvement, but they are good. You could take some very good photos with them. I like the design. And I'm actually a little torn because with the OnePlus 12 and the OnePlus 11, they've had this metal bar on the side kind of connect you to the camera. That's going to disappear, but the camera is basically going to be in the same spot. And so many people complain about the camera. I'm like, but the camera to me looks gorgeous. It looks like a watch face. And it tells you that this is premium. It tells you that they're there to, to do work like it's they mean business it's not the stupid little camera cutout it's the classic camera punch out it's like I get tired of the same old same old okay we just have these little circles on the back I I like the way that Oppo and OnePlus does this call me crazy but I think it looks very premium and they're keeping the four the four edge curved display which is something that's nice as well if you still like that of course the screen is largely flat but it is slightly curved at the edges I like that and it's just a stark contrast to what you get with Samsung. Samsung went everything flat, everything kind of that minimalistic approach looking, nothing too flashy. And OnePlus is very functional, very performance based, and it looks nice and it looks clean. You're going to get the same chip. We've got the Snapdragon 8 Elite. So this is going to be one of the first mainstream phones that we're going to see with it. But one of the other reasons it's so important to have OnePlus in the United States is it's really the only other flagship phone you can get that's going to run the latest Snapdragon chipset. You have the iPhone. The iPhone has its own silicon. You look at Google Pixel. It's got its own chip, the Tensor. So when you look in the United States, we don't have a lot of the options like they do overseas. We don't have Xiaomi. We don't have Huawei. We don't have Oppo. We don't have Honor. We don't have some of those other brands that really make some cool phones and bring some great stuff to the table. We don't even have Sony anymore here in the States. So it's very important that OnePlus continues to maintain this presence because not everybody wants a Samsung, but every like some people still want the best of the best. And they do that, but they do it at a significantly reduced cost. So whenever the S24 Ultra came out, they bumped the price up $1,299, $1,300 phone. And then you have the OnePlus 12 came out and it was what? $799, $899, even at $899, still $500 cheaper. So... That's one of the great things about OnePlus. You st and they've called it the flagship killer for years and years. And I know that now people are like, oh, you're just using that as like a hype terminology or as clickbait or whatever. That's what they were called. And that's why so many people use the flagship killer when they talk about OnePlus phones. When the original OnePlus 1, OnePlus 2, OnePlus 3 came out, that's where they coined that phrase because you could get basically all the stuff performance wise you could get in a samsung phone or the other phones but you could get it for several hundred dollars cheaper and that's still the case 
I mean, like I said, 749 for a 512 version of the 112, which is a fantastic phone, or on sale at the same store, you can pay 1099 for the S24 Ultra. And there's always that several hundred dollar price gap. It makes them more affordable and you still get that great experience. I wish they would up their software updates. I wish they would go to at least monthly. If they could do five years of operating system updates, five years security patches and do monthly, or even the four years of operating system updates, five years security patches and do monthly updates, I think that would go a long way to make people a lot happier. They're pretty good about getting the operating system out. Android 15 is in beta on OnePlus 12 and the OnePlus Open right now. So they are still pretty quick about getting that out. It's several months ahead of Samsung, and it'll give you a nice taste and flavor for what one, uh, Android 15 is about. But yeah, that's, that's still in the beta, but you can get access to it, which is pretty neat. But I think it's so important that we continue to have OnePlus, and I think they've been doing a good job, and they've listened. We've got IP69, which is crazy, not IP68. They've gone the extra distance, IP69. 6,000 milliamp battery is going to be in this new phone. Snapdragon 8 Elite processor. It's still going to have the IR blaster, 50 watt wireless charging, 100 watt wired charging, and ultrasonic fingerprint scanner. So they're up, they're upping the ante in so many places on that phone. Where from a hardware perspective, if you don't like Samsung, if you don't like paying Samsung prices, it's the perfect alternative because you're going to get that same horsepower, same level of performance. It's going to be super zippy. You could do all your gaming. You can do everything you want to do on a phone and it's going to save you probably three, four, five hundred dollars. And that's fantastic. It's not like a hundred bucks. And Google kind of kind of sold us out in this department. Google, one reason I was really big on Google when they first brought out the Pixel 6 was because... I thought they understood, okay, we know we're not Samsung, we know we're offering a, a different experience with the Tensor chip, but we're still premium enough to give you a good experience, but we're not going to charge you the moon, right? It was what, $599, I think, for the Pixel 6 and like $899 or $799 for the 6 Pro. It was, it was several hundred dollars cheaper. I, I can't remember the exact number, but it was several hundred dollars cheaper. It stayed that way. And now the Pixel 9 is $799 and the Pixel 9 Pro is $999. Like they're on the same... They're on the same spectrum there. They're, they're charging the same amount of money basically as an S24, as an S25 is going to be likely, as an iPhone 16. Like the iPhone 16 and the Pixel 9 are the same price. Whereas you can look at the OnePlus 12, you can look at the OnePlus 13, and they take it a step further. Like it's basically a fully fledged flagship phone on par with the Ultra, but four or $500 cheaper. And, and that's, that's the big thing. So it, some people say, oh, it's a directly compatible with the Plus series, the S24 Plus. No, no, it's not. This is directly on par with the Ultra. And from a day-to-day -day perspective, performance, everything, and all the different changes that they've done with this phone, the 13, I think is going to be a really, really impressive phone. Hopefully it's lucky number 13 and instead of bad luck 13. Like 13 is never a good thing unless you're the Friday the 13th movie series. <laughs> but anyway, I, I'm really excited about it. I think it's important. I'd like to see them get back in carriers. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. That that would be pure speculation at this point. But they did get where they could put them in Best Buy stores. So you can walk in the store, go into the Best Buy, check it out, buy one on the spot. And I think that's important because it still keeps them visible, but they're not having to pay all those extra carrier tags because the carriers want a lot of money. They want like millions of dollars to certify these things, to actually say certify them on the network and then carry them in the stores and put like, shelf space for them. They charge out the rear for that. So I guess that's one thing OnePlus is doing to help keep the cost down. They are certifying them. Like they have worked, been certified with 5G on AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, all that stuff. So they're very good phones. They offer everything. They offer more. And when you put them up next side by side to like the S24 Plus, S24 Ultra, or even the S25 Ultra when it comes out, they're very, very neck and neck in almost every way. OnePlus does edge them out in a few ways, but Samsung, of course, still has the stylus. They still have DeX. And if you don't care about DeX, if you don't care about the S Pen, and you want to save hundreds of dollars, the OnePlus phones are great alternatives. If you want those things, clearly Samsung is the only one that still offers those. But anyway, that's all I got. I just wanted to talk about it again, why it's so important. Because some people are like, oh, OnePlus, I don't care. I'm not buying it. Why do they even bother? They don't have that much of a market share in the United States. Like, It's very important that they keep doing that because it helps to keep Samsung honest. It helps to give us choice. It gives us options. It gives us different flavor of the same Android, but still gives us all the top-end speed, top-end performance, 
And we need that because they're the really only ones offering that other than Samsung. So that's all I've got. If you have any questions, comments, gripes, concerns, complaints, all that stuff, please go to the comment section. I'll do my best to get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, if you like this stuff, you like OnePlus content, hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you guys next time.